Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A big warm welcome to all our sisters today. My name is Dr. Bhutul and I'm very excited to be your host today. We've all come together virtually speaking for UK Islamic Mission's annual Ramadan series. Ramadan is the month of the Quran and as an organization we not only you know, we react to the needs of the community and we listen to the voices of our members. So this year, mashallah, not only do we have a full revision of the direct translation of the Quran happening on a local level across the UK, but we are very blessed and very, um, very blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be running this national level series in English. So what we are doing in this series, we are looking at a specific surah every re- week with relation to a particular key theme in the Quran. It's a deeper analysis. It allows us to really get that flavor of the Quran. For those of you who don't know about UK I am, and this is all new to you, I'll just give you a very quick overview to get you up to speed. UK Islamic Mission has been actively doing Islamic work, work, so that includes classes, seminars, you name it, relief projects, dawah work for many years. I mean, to the extent that, sisters, if you were to speak to any of the members present here today and ask them, by the way, how long have these annual Ramadan classes been going on? I'm sure many of the sisters would have lost count. And the really beautiful aspect of UK Islamic mission that gets mentioned over and over again is that it takes the average child or average person like myself and it teaches and trains us in the skills needed so that we can spread that message of Islam and to have that strong Muslim identity that in turn benefits the community in the UK. Having said all of that, today's speaker is very much above average, mashallah, very special indeed. She has been affiliated with UK Islamic Mission for more than 12 years, um, in which time she has been part of the advisory committee for many years. She has done Islamic study courses from the online Islamic University. She's done dawah training through other organizations. So she's been busy seeking benefit from other routes too. Currently, she is working very closely with our revert sisters under UK Islamic Mission's New Muslim Care. So that essentially includes the whole package from Islamic studies, Quran, Tafsir, Tajweed. The classes are very lovely, very friendly, just a very wholesome environment and have proved equally popular with born Muslims. So I'm very excited for today's session. So I will stop talking now and I will pass you on to the very capable hands of Sister Saba Altaf, who will be reciting Quran and leading today's session, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Batul. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm well. I'm very much looking forward to the session. So I, without further ado, I'll leave it to yourself. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Dear sisters, uh, I hope that you are all well. Inshallah, uh, we will be starting um, um, the study of uh, Surah Yasin. Uh, today is part one. I will do the recitation. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa ashabul ajma'in. وأمهات المؤمنين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنزل قوما ما 
وَنُذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّ جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَسْقَانِ فَهُمْ مُقْمَحُونَ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَتًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَتًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ <تصفيق> وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنزَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنزِرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّمَا تُنزِرُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَ وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ إِنَّ نَحْنُ نُخْيَ الْمَوْتَى وَنَكْتُبُوا مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَخْسَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ Yaseen, by the Qur'an, full of wisdom, truly you, O Muhammad, are one of the messengers on a straight path. This is um, a revelation sent down by the Almighty, the most merciful, in order that you may warn a people whose forefathers were not warned, so they are heedless. Indeed, the word of punishment has proved true against most of them, so they will not believe. Verily, we have put on their necks iron collars reaching to their chins so that their heads are forced up. And we have put a barrier before them and a barrier behind them. We have covered them so they cannot see. It is same to them whether you warn them or you warn them not. They will not believe. You can only warn him who follows the reminder, this Qur'an, and fears the most beneficent, unseen, Allah. Bear you to such one the glad tidings of forgiveness and a generous reward. Verily, we give life to death, and we record that which they sent before them and their traces, of footstep or their traces and all that things we have recorded with numbers in a clear book. Inshallah, we will be covering uh, 12 ayats today with the, with the introduction. Um, I hope that uh, last week's session were as beneficial for you as they were for me. And uh, sometimes you read those uh, surahs so many times, but doing an in-depth study just take you to a different level of understanding. And Sister Azra did so very well in um, explaining. I would like to start the, the today's session with a little bit of recap, if, um, if I'm allowed to do that. Um, but would it be good that if I ask you a question and you answer it so that we know that you were listening last uh, week as well? Just one question I'm going to ask you. What are the three main beliefs of Islam? Or you can say, what are the three main themes of Quran? Because this is a thematic study. So if you want to write down in your chat room, uh, chat box, Anything that comes into your mind, even if it's one that you remember, um, that would be really good. So I don't know how many people have joined, and I hope that people, yep. Okay, Tawheed Risala Akhra, excellent. Akhra Tawheed Prophet, Tawheed Risala Akhra, yep, all right then. So <clears throat> the... <clears throat> So the Quran, uh, the whole of the Quran revolves around these three major themes, and then we have sub themes as well in Quran. However, 
for this uh, month's uh, uh, series that we are doing the thematic study, we have picked four rather than three. These three, the Tawheed, um, yeah, Tawheed, uh, the Prophethood, uh, Akhira, uh, and Prophetic Mission. Prophetic Mission, I've, you know, you can say, putting his prophethood into practice. OK, so that's uh, that's a prophet uh, mission, prophetic mission. Today, Surah Yasin, we will be doing and we have picked Surah Yasin for the theme of prophethood, but we're going to go through it. Before that, just want to give you basic principle of understanding Quran. Purity of intention. You know, uh, 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 our uh, actions are based on our intentions. There are so many people in this world <clears throat> who have done studies of Quran, intense studies of Quran, just to find mistakes from it. And they are called Orientalists. And there are so many people uh, in this world who have done study of Quran uh, just for the sake of it, you know. Or, or, or to get uh, some position, whatever. But we need to keep check our, uh, our intentions, that our intention should be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to change ourselves for better. Okay, so that's what intention is. Importance of Quran, uh, Quran is not a normal book. Quran is, it's an it's 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 an extraordinary. It's an uh, miraculous nature book uh, revealed by the creator of the heavens and the earth. So we are not holding an ordinary book. So feel the 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 importance of Quran and determination to change. The intention must have that that we must be determined to to change ourselves for positive and for better. Reflecting and pondering, Quran invites us throughout uh, to, to come and reflect and to ponder. And we, we're going to do that today. And dua for guidance, uh, that is one of the best tools that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to uh, believers is, um, is dua. Okay, the virtues and merits of Surah Yasin. It is regarded as earlier Makkan Surah. And there is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that everything has a heart and the heart of Quran is Yasin. A heart is a sign of life. And up till it is pumping, one is considered to be alive, isn't it? Even when a person is in coma, but his heart is still pumping, we referred him as an alive person. Dr. Patul would agree with me, she must have seen those people. You cannot say this is a dead body, even if the body is completely gone, finished, but the heart is still pumping. So we, we, we classify that person as alive. When a woman gets pregnant, the first thing the doctor checks is the little heartbeat of the fetus, you know, and that's the most exciting time for the mothers. So coming back to Yasin, what do you think uh, why Yasin is referred as heart of Quran. We're going to do pondering session today. So I'm not going to ask you very simple questions. I'm going to ask you a question that, uh, you know, one, one needs to, to ponder and think and contemplate over it. Why do you think Yasin is being referred by the Prophet وسلم, as the, the heart of Quran? Anybody have any idea? If not, we're going to move on. This we are bit pressed of time today. It's only an hour. Okay. Yasin is referred as the heart of Quran, and there are opinions of the scholars, but the most relevant is that uh, sums up all Quran, Prophet came as Warner and Good News and Akhirat. Very close to, to very, very close, uh, but let's see what uh, the scholars say. That Yasin have all three major themes of the core Islamic belief. That is Tawheed, Akhirah and Prophethood. So that is why it, it, 
if this is such an important thing, these beliefs are, uh, the soundness of one's faith depend on acknowledging all these three beliefs. Rejecting an, uh, or not believing any of these is equal to a dead heart or dead soul. Even a crack in any of these pillars, these are considered to be pillars of, of Islam. Uh, if there is a slight crack in the belief of any of these pillars, it can lead to instability to the building of our faith. This is how important it is. There, therefore, it is extremely important to understand the meaning of all the surahs of Quran. You know, here are, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are some people who will recite Quran on daily basis, most of their lives, but do not know what does it say. And this is a real tragedy. And we must never fall in the traps of shaitan that it is not important uh, to know the meaning of Quran. So um, we move on to, um, to another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, whoever, and this is the benefit of, uh, <clears throat> uh, of the, um, Surah Yasin, whoever recites Yasin in the night seeking the face of Allah will be forgiven. What does seeking the face of Allah mean? Seeking the face of Allah is the meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be our main goal. Our main and uh, prime goal is to reach Jannah, isn't it? All of us will agree, yes? So, and when we reach, we cannot meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't reach Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will not see us will not make us meet him until we are safely in Jannah. And only then we will have that, that, that time to, to actually meet our creator. So here the Prophet ﷺ is saying a person who yearns for, for paradise and meeting his or her uh, creator, Lord, if they recite Yasin with that feeling in them, Allah will forgive them, inshallah. Yasin is also recommended by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be recite, to recite on a, a person's, a, a person close to death. So a person is about to die. Why do you think, do you know? Why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has recommended this surah? We all know. We all know that we recite even in Masajid, uh, there are funerals happening and there will be little uh, booklets of Yasin or as soon as uh, the person is gone very, very ill and there is absolutely no hope, people start uh, reading Yasin on them. Why is that? Any idea? I'll carry on. So his core belief and faith be revived before he leaves this world. Remind him about Akra, traditional mostly. Um, yes, traditional mostly, of course. It becomes traditional when we don't know what the, what the surah says. Basis of our belief, yes. Okay, yes. Um, a remind of Akra, Rim, uh, is the closest, I would say, uh, that it has all three themes in it. This surah is beautifully layered one after the other with these themes, and we'll try to go through that part of it today and the next three, three days. So it is utmost important to know, the, at least to know this, this surah <clears throat> so very well, like a back of our hand. Imagine we are on our deathbed. Our family is reciting Yasin with the hope that this will help us, but it won't help us because we never knew what was in it. So how would how would we renew our faith before before leaving this uh, uh, this world? OK. Remember the two angels who will be interrogating us in our grave. What are their names? Munkar and Nakir. Does anybody know? what they will be saying. What, what question they're going to ask us in the grave? Does anybody know? Uh, three questions they're going to ask us. And those three questions 
Who is your Lord? Who is your Lord? Who is God? Yeah. All right. What is your religion? Excellent. Yes. Yes. And the third question. Third question is. Who is your prophet? Excellent. Who is your Rab? Who is who is the prophet? Yes. So the 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 religion and uh, the Rab, the religion, the prophet. These are three questions they're going to ask, and um, we can only answer them successfully in our graves if we have spent our life based on these <clears throat> main beliefs and principle of Islam. If we have put these principles uh, of Islam and the beliefs of Islam in our life day in, day out, in the smallest things, in the in the big decisions and the small things at home, then we can confidently tell those angels, this is these are the answers. But if we have not, no matter how much we try to uh, memorize them, we will be um, you know, not not would we will not be able to answer. May Allah save us from that. May Allah give us uh, ease in our graves. OK. <clears throat> We're going to start. Yasin. Now, Yasin, these are the disconnected or disjoint letters. OK. Always and they're always in the beginning of the surahs, and there are 29 surahs with these letters, haruf muqatta'at. They are called in uh, in uh, Arabic, and that they they are not they are disconnected. You see, um, and um, uh, no one knows actually the real meaning of these letters, as there was no explanation either in Quran or Sunnah, because. The the Sunnah would only give explanation if the if the Ashab of Rasulullah were not satisfied with the answer or they did not understood the answer. But it seems that they understood the answer because there is no explanation or evidence or any tradition by any of the uh, Ashab of Rasulullah that uh, uh, we asked the Prophet Sallallahu and he answered. So all the answers are um, the the scholars own thinking. OK, now. <clears throat> these letters are from uh, the, the most impo uh, The scholars give a lot of uh, opinions, but the most uh, authentic, not the most, the, the most uh, um, in majority um, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these letters are from Arabic alphabet and Arabs of that time were very proud of uh, them being eloquent in their language. They used to take pride in their skills of poetry and they used to have competition in composing stories. So that was the time, you know, they used to send their children to the desert uh, so that um, their language is still pure, apart from uh, uh, and the culture, they do not uh, lose the authenticity and the pureness of their culture. <coughs> excuse me, and their language in the city. So Makkah was a city. So they used to send their children far in, in the desert. And one of the reasons was to preserve the language. Um, so, so they used to take pride and they used to have um, competitions of poetry and competition in composing stories. And they're very social at that time. And one of the reason of them being social was to, to get together and have these um, um, these poetry and uh, composing story sessions. So according to most of the scholar scholars. By putting these letters in Quran, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to them, here are the alphabets of the same language that you are so proud of. You articulate your speech with it, don't you? So this is now my speech and that you are rejecting and I challenge you to come up with something similar. 
even one eye. And if you fail, which you will be, then be warned. Be warned that it will have heavy consequences. So the, the scholars took these letters and uh, and uh, associated them with the uh, uh, Arabic language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is throwing these letters right in front of their faces and saying, come on, make make something like uh, like Quran because you're rejecting it. You're rejecting it as a as a word of a, a magician or a word of a, ma a madman. So come on, you're so elegant, uh, eloquent in your language. Just make up something similar, just one one verse. And Quran has given this challenge uh, in in Quran. There is this challenge in Quran. <clears throat> but nothing has happened, <clears throat> inshallah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So by putting these letters in Quran, uh, oh, sorry. So in, in Quran, these letters are always at the very start of the surah and straight after them, there is mostly reference of uh, Quran itself. So as soon as you uh, have these this uh, joint letter Haruf Muqattaat in most of the 29th surahs, not all, but most of them, the next verse will be explaining the authenticity uh, and the, the, the elevated uh, uh, status of Quran. Like, uh, for example, on your screens, you will see Alif Lam Mim. This is the book with no doubt in it. OK, so that and then Qaf by the Quran, the most majestic. And then here Yasin by the Quran, the most wise. OK. Now coming to the letters Yasin specifically, there are different opinions of the scholars. According to Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and one of the great, uh, probably the first one who um, explained Quran, which which then copied into uh, Tafsir. We, we have his own tafas, Tafsir as well. And Imam Malik, who had the school of thought, um, According to these two, it is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, according to other companions of the Prophet uh, uh, وسلم, Yasin is the name of Prophet himself. So um, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas said that this is one of the name of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but a lot of other Sahaba, and there was a long list of other Sahaba saying that no, this is probably and supposed to be the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they explain it in a way, Ya, Ya refers to he, uh, you know, call. O, O, you. So, and seen. Seen is the middle letter of the word insan. So, in, in, if you write insan in Arabic, um, this seen will come in the middle. Therefore, Yasin is said to be referring to the Prophet وسلم, as he is like the center of the humanity. It's, it's as if saying, oh, you who is the center of humanity. I take oath and then. And then the, the other side, uh, other parts of the surah. Surah then begin. So, but of course, these are just the opinions of the scholar and there is no reference from Quran and Sunnah. OK. Well, Quran al Hakim by the wise Quran. Now, in today's culture, we take oaths either formal or as a casual street language expression. OK, for example, uh, as formal, it is usually taken in courtrooms in today's life, you know, I will say the truth and nothing but the truth. OK, so it's it's in all cultures. OK. Um, as casual, like street language, we often say we all say that I swear either in extreme anger or or explaining something which is uh, which is quite a lot. Like, for example, um, mm, uh, I swear I will kill him. If if he did this again, I swear I will kill him. 
You know, this is my expression of anger. It's not a very nice way of uh, showing my anger, but this is how um, kids would do. This is how teenagers would do. You know, if he, if he does it again to me, I'm going to kill him. I swear I'm going to kill him. Um, or um, if I eat one more piece of cake, I swear I will burst. burst. So these are the expression, but oaths are taken in it. Now, for ancient Arabs, oaths were taken, uh, often taken to grab the listener's attention for a special announcement to follow. So they would take oaths if there is something that they want everybody to listen. They would first uh, join it with an oath to get their attention. For example, if the oath is taken by the dawn time or by the morning sun, the listeners would know that something will happen after the morning time or during the day. OK. However, Quran have a different and unique style when it comes to oath. In Quran. OK, I'm just looking at the time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so in Quran, uh, oath is taken usually taken as to stand witness to what happened or will happen. For example, <coughs> wal asr, time is the oath here and standing witness to the history of whole of mankind, how people and nations were perished when they did not believe in Allah and following his command. The translation of Hakim uh, well, Quran al Hakim. The translation of Hakim is wise, but the definition of tafsir uh, is to explain within human uh, capacity, human brain capacity, the mirac uh, miracle words of Quran as intended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, Hakim also means mohkam, which means clear, precise, and definite. So this wise Quran, what is this wise Quran standing witness to? OK. What is this wise Quran standing witness to? The answer is in the next three ayats. In the Kalamina al-Mursaleen, ala siratim mustaqim, tanzeel al-aziz al-Rahim. You are indeed one of the messengers on the straight path. And this, the Quran, is the revelation of the Almighty, uh, the All Merciful. And this is not the only place in Quran that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala confirms the authenticity of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as His Prophet and Messenger, bringing the true and clear message. In in uh, in another uh, portion of uh, uh, Quran in Surah uh, Surah Ashura. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and verily you are indeed guiding the mankind to the straight path, the path of Allah to whom belongs all that is in the heaven and all that is on the earth. Verily to Allah all matters return. So the Quran is the proof that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the true prophet of Allah and he is on the straight way, meaning he is following a straight mythology and religion and an upright law. So Allah is pointing three things very clearly here to the disbelievers. Because the first people who took these ayats, who the ayats when they were revealed, who were the first people who who uh, received these ayats? They were the Meccans, OK? And the majority of the Meccans were the disbelievers, totally against uh, 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 Prophet Sallallahu and his message of truth. OK, so Quran is pointing three, three things uh, to, to, the, to the disbelievers. One is that this book is full of wisdom. It is clear. It has no ambiguity, no contradiction, no theories. It is precise and definite. Its laws and commands are crystal clear. Second, this man, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is one from same elite of messengers that Ibrahim and Ismail Alayhi Salam belong. All uh, Allah here, okay, Allah here does not say um, that this 
he is my messenger. Rather, he said he is from among the messengers. Why? Because the Makkan wholeheartedly believe uh, in, in Ibrahim and Ismail salam. They believed in Ibrahim and Ismail salam. And Prophet Muhammad salam, is from that lineage. So how come they would ex accept uh, uh, two and then they would reject the third? And the third is <clears throat> this book and the messenger who is on the straight path are both sent by, by whom? By Aziz al-Rahim, by the Almighty and all merciful. Now, two attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are one after the other. The first one, he is almighty. And the second one is merciful. The first one is, um, is meant to, um, you know, show that this Quran is not sent by a powerless preacher. Uh, um, uh, you know, and, and people just ignore. Rather, uh, he is the owner of the universe, the heavens and the earth. And he is the one who can decree anything, who can force anything. This is his power. And whose grasp cannot be avoided by anybody. So this, the first uh, attribute shows the strength uh, of the author. The second attribute is meant to make one realize that it is all due to his kindness and mercy that he has sent his messenger for our guidance and instructions sent down uh, by this through this book uh, so that uh, we do not get um, disguided or misguided. Misguided. We go on the straight path. So Quran is like a navigator. It shows us the green light is straight reaching to Jannah and it shows us do not get in this exit. You're going to get lost. OK, and the messenger وسلم, was the teacher of this uh, instruction manual. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining here. So that you may warn a people whose forefathers um, were not uh, warned and so they live uh, in heedless life. OK. Now, how could there's a question? And I would want you to answer me by, um, by in a couple of words, uh, if, if you can. How could and you can also use your mic if you want to. How could those generation to whom no prophet or messenger was sent, meaning that uh, there is a huge gap from one messenger to another messenger, there was a huge gap. The messenger is not living in them. So how can those generation, when the messenger is not living in them, be held responsible for their deviation? Why would they be held responsible if they've gone deviated? The Prophet ﷺ is not living among us. So if we go deviated, why would we get uh, punished over it? He's not with us anymore. OK, every uh, azab from Allah once says every soul took a covenant with Allah before they were born. Yes, but they don't remember it, uh, Fozia. They don't remember it. They will remember it when Allah wills. You know, sometimes we do uh, uh, new Muslim projects and we work uh, very closely with new Muslims. And sometimes when you ask them and they say, well, we, I just heard Adhan and I just it was mesmerizing and I became Muslim. And you think, I mean, I've been teaching my children for the last so many years and they are still not doing the way I want them to follow Islam. And how come a person who just heard uh, an Adhan have totally changed? And that is because that um, covenant, it just clicks, but mostly it is, um, it's not remembered. It's their duty to hold on to the message. Rim, yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> even if we don't have the message messenger, uh, we still have the message. 
Yes, Abdul, we still have the message, but even if we don't have the messenger, the message has already remained the same. Very good. Yes, everyone has a responsibility to spread message. Yes, Noor, you've hit the nail here. Uh, each generation after the prophet or the messenger is called must, must, must produce people who keep reminding people of the teachings of that prophet. And there is always the book of instruction between them. OK, it is only when the people stop listening to these reformers and the warners of their time that they become heedless. So it is vital that after the prophet die, there must be people who keep on reminding uh, the community of the teachings of that prophet and the command of their instruction manual, their book. So, so. You know, the, the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu there's no, no more Prophet going to come. So the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu is being asked, Kuntum khayra ummati nukhrijat li nasi ta'maruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhauna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. That you are the best nation raised. Allah raised us only for this job, my dear sisters. This is our only job to spread the message because there's not going to be any more messengers coming. So think it very seriously. Even if you do a smallest thing together, like we are sitting together, Sister Batul is very, very busy doctor in a busy hospital, but she squeezed time to be here. OK, because she wants to take part in it. And there are so many other sisters who are juggling their busy lives, but they want to take part in this so that on the day of judgment, what a small job we've done today. You know, I'm sitting in the comfort of my house and I, ha I have read few tafasir and then did my research. It's not as difficult as I would think it is. You know, it's just being alert and dedication. So, so think it very seriously. This Ramadan, this Ramadan is a pondering time. OK, <clears throat> so. Indeed, the word has come true for most of them, but they do not believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that despite all the warnings, they will not listen and are heading towards their own destruction. You remember what happened in, in uh, Ghazwa Badr? All the arrogant uh, uh, leaders who rejected Quran, who rejected Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala made this verse as a promise to them, and they all died. The major Meccan leadership was killed uh, on that day, and that day of Badr was called the day of Furqan, the criterion. The good and evil has been separated by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. <clears throat> have I have I missed one? We have put OK, we have put fetters around their neck which reach up to their chin so that they are standing with their head upright. Now this is a graphic picture of uh, the consequences of arrogance is being described here. You know, those who reject the message of truth. Allah used the word aglalan which is shackles uh, or, or fretters to show their stubbornness and arrogance in, a, in ex accepting the truth, reaching to their chin as Lani, as, as, as uh, al -asqan, asqani, okay, implies the stiffness of their neck. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, saying here is that they, um, they, their, their attitude was so stuck up and you know the most stuck up uh, uh, body uh, position is when you when one's head is high and he's looking down that's the most stuck up you know when children do their play play games and they show this i'm 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 not going to listen to you um this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said even if they want to be humble at that time i won't i won't let them they will they will stand in front of me with that stuck up position because they will not be able to bow their their heads. Subhanallah, may Allah make us uh, 
uh, among those who are saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wrapped on his in his mercy. And we have put a barrier before them and a barrier behind them and have covered them up so Sister Zappa, we can't hear you. everyone. Um, I think Sister Saba is just sorting out her sound now. But as she was saying, we're doing a thematic study and we're just running through uh, Surah Yasin. I, I believe she's leaving the chat and re-entering because switching things on and off tends to help. Uh, we're just doing the thematic study of Surah Yasin. I believe she wanted to cover 12 verses today, so we're uh, reaching the conclusion soon, inshallah. If anyone has any questions about what we've covered so far, you can pop it in the chat box. Um, and then inshallah, we can either cover it later in today's session or in the sessions coming up in the next few days. Uh, for the sisters who aren't aware, our sessions run from Monday to Thursday at the same time. Um, we are doing Surah Yasin this week and then we'll be moving on to a different Surah next week and then the following week. And then Alhamdulillah after Ramadan, we're very blessed in UK I am will have Lots of different sessions running. We normally have our post Ramadan series and then our weekly sessions. So obviously this is running on a national level and we're all blessed to be in each other's company. But then we do also have weekly classes that run. Um, so that's locally in branches. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sister Sabah, are you with us? I believe Sister Saba has re-entered the room. Uh, how is the mic working? Her mic is switched off. Uh, Sababaji, can you speak now? Um, hello. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Inshallah. And can you can you see my screen? Yes, it's uh it's not on full screen yet, oh. but we can see it. Okay. It's full screen now. We can see all the slides. Maybe. Okay. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Um, which ayah was I? <laughs> because I, I must be talk. I was talking to a dead screen for such a long time. Um, it is same that whether you warn them the barrier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, and uh, and then wasawa on alayhim anzertahum am lam tunzirhum la yuminun. Yeah, okay, it is all the same. It is all the same for them whether you warn them or you do not warn them, for they shall not believe. Now, does that mean? Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, and this is a question for you sisters, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they're not going to believe, they're not going to believe. So do you think that there's no point giving dawa then? Do you think that there's no point giving dawa, calling people to dawa, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they're not going to believe? Any idea? No? But I wrote down, of course not. We should always try. Yes, of course not. Look, 
in giving dawa, there is one thing we must remember. And the reason I'm I'm doing uh, saying dawa because I know a lot of my colleagues are listening as well. So um, when giving dawa, we cannot give hadaya. Our job is to to make uh, the message clear and give whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed. We just pass that message. This is all our job. Our job is to give information, not to change their hearts. That is Allah. Allah changed my heart and your heart. But but it were they were the teachers, my teachers that I listened and and I learned more. OK, so so no, we should uh, give dawah. This is our job. This is the jobs of the, the prophets and Allah has raised us as a nation to do this job. But Allah knows it's just like a teacher knows that this this child is not going to pass because he's neither attended any classes, neither he's covered any any topic, but she would still make him sit in 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 the in the uh, um, examination hall. Because that's not fair on 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 him. <clears throat> you can warn only him who follows the admonition and fear the merciful Lord without seeing him. Give such a one good tidings of forgiveness and generous reward. Um, I'm just reading the chat. Do I need to read the chat? No. Yeah, we should always try. OK, OK. Um, so um, you can only warn. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they're not going to listen. And then the next ayah, he said you can only warn the one who is who listens and who takes your warnings, takes the warnings, takes the um, admonition and fear the merciful Lord, fear our Rahman without seeing him. You know, look at his uh, Iman and give give them the glad tiding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all merciful and generous and there is a generous reward waiting for them. So as we said, our job is to give information. Uh, then it is Allah who changed the heart. Allah knows whose heart is sealed and Allah knows who, whose heart is not sealed. Now coming to this question of heart seal and not seal. Hearts are only sealed when the person subhanAllah has rejected on multiple times the message. Only then the hearts are sealed. It's not that Allah is the most just. He is Al-Hakim. He is the most just. He, he cannot just say, all right, I'm going to seal subhanAllah, may Allah save me, Sabah's heart. I'm going to open so-and-so's heart. No. It is when we when the person rejects many, 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 many times only then. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is not a game. This is not a game that you're playing. This is serious matter. OK, now we reach to the last ayah. It's only covering 12 ayahs today. We shall surely raise the dead to life. Um, and we record what they did and the traces of their deed that they had left behind. We have uh, we have encompassed that in a clear book. This shows that two kinds of entries are made in the contact uh, conduct uh, or conduct book. And this is for all mankind. All mankind deeds good and bad that he or she has done throughout their life or will be recorded. This is one thing, OK? Number two, what effect those deeds will have on others? For example, if someone choose to do something which is pleasing to his Lord and also beneficial to people, then as long as it is giving benefit to others, it will also give benefit to him even in his grave or on the judgment day. OK, now. For example. This 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 second point, for example. A scholar writes a book which makes it easy to understand Quran. 
Now, whoever will re read that book and change himself or be, you know, whatever benefit he will get, the scholar will get that benefit as well in his grave or on in the on 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 the judgment day, inshallah. OK, and uh, similarly, if uh, somebody has done um, something wrong. I mean, um, if if uh, if somebody has started something wrong. Within the community, say, for example, um, people who make immoral movies and the, the masses see them and then they implement those things, uh, evil things in their lives. So the person who made that movie and the whole group who made that movie will be cursed. The more people will get uh, uh, um, misguided the more they will get uh, the 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 curse or the you know adab. may allah save us from that but mm -hmm. a person who is doing good will inshallah uh, get benefit even in their grave and even in uh, uh, um, on the day of judgment inshallah spreading the deen of allah is one of the easiest way of accumulating satka jariya for your own self. Jariya means continuous. Satka is the charity. And uh, if you put that satka jariya into your duty as spreading the message of Islam, then it is it is become one of the easiest way, inshallah. Uh, whatever I said uh, was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I do make plenty of mistakes with my speech as well. Um, so I do ask for everybody's uh, pardon. Um, we're going to, I'm going to finish here, uh, Batul, and uh, then inshallah you will let us know what the uh, appeal for to today is, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, uh, Sister Sabah, it was a really beautiful session. I really like all the reflective aspects of it. It really does get your mind thinking over things. Um, and I think what Sister Saba said near the end of the session really leads on nicely to today's appeal this idea that it is each of our responsibilities to pass on the message of islam generation by generation so today's appeal is for uk islamic missions dawa project we mentioned at the beginning that uk islamic mission does dawa work um, and the dawa work is here in the uk and I would urge each and every one of you, if you're financially able, to donate because really a portion of our charity does go abroad, but a portion of it should go towards benefiting your local community. And we always talk about back home, but really this is our home. You know, it's the home of our community's children, our community's children's children. And we do so much for our next generation. We prepare their houses. We prepare you know we prepare who will get what in inheritance we educate them we do so much and we can't neglect the environment they are going into and if we want them to grow up in a world that is educated about islam we want them to grow up in a world where people share their faith then we need to take steps in doing that we need to provide the literature we need to provide the copies of quran and alhamdulillah the organization as a whole is doing that and it is our duty, if we're able to, to give a little bit financially, make that contribution so that we can continue doing that work in the UK. The details are on the screen, so you can either go to the website directly or just plug it into Google, UKIM, Dawa, and then it will come up and then you'll be able to donate, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for everyone attending today. Please bring your friends, bring your children, and if you're young, bring your mum and uh, bring your family, essentially. Don't be the only one sat here. Bring the people around you that you love so that they can come and benefit too. The class will be again at the same time tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, one of the sisters was asking regarding recordings. Recordings will be available soon also. May Allah make us people of Quran and allow us to benefit from these classes. Ameen. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر